This is a screencast on trifles by Susan Glassful. It's the first um, of the dramas that are in the drama unit. Uh, this is a really short play, but there's a lot to unpack um, here. A lot of things that are going on. Um, I want to take some time and kind of walk you through um, the story and a couple of things that I really want you to understand about um, this story in general. Um, so at first you probably noticed that the setting, you've got this dark and gloomy farmhouse. It doesn't have a lot of furniture. We, that's what I mean by stark. Um, it's, uh, it's not a cheerful place. It's a very cold environment. And so what's happened here is um, the man and the woman that live there, the rights, um, they um, have come, the, the authorities have come, and they have found Mr. Wright dead in the house, and they have arrested his wife for murder. And so the uh, local sheriff and the uh, kind of like the district attorney or the prosecutor, uh, they have come to the house to try to find evidence and they brought their wives with them, who were actually happen to be neighbors, Mrs. Hale and Mrs. Peters. And they are going to sit downstairs and have a chat while the men are upstairs looking for evidence. Um, and so the, the story really is a dialogue between Mrs. Hale and Mrs. Peters. And through their conversation, we, as the reader, uh, get a sense of who they were, a sense of what the home life was like and something that you need to kind of be aware of and you probably notice within the story is that the men kind of think the women are silly and frivolous um, they think that they're there kind of like to keep stay in the kitchen and take care of the house and that kind of thing. They don't really accept the women um, as equals uh, on any count. And so that's something to keep in the back of your mind as you um, as you think about this story. So here we have uh, Mr. Wright. He has, uh, he's dead from suffocation. He has a knot around his neck. And you have Mrs. Wright who they refer to as his once sweet and pretty, but kind of timid and fluttery wife, um, who's in jail for the murder, okay? So th these two women, they're having this conversation while the men are looking for evidence in the house. They're talking first about the house. They're like, you know, it never was cheerful. Um, I've never liked this place. I don't know what it is, but it's all it's a lonesome place and always was. They talk about how cold this house is. They did, you know, women would go and visit other women and, and sit and knit and, and talk about children and stuff like that. And they didn't do that here at the Wright's house. They never really um, came to visit because they didn't like Mr. Wright and they didn't like the house. Um, they talk about Mr. Wright. He, uh, Mrs. Wright had the bird, the little song bird, and it was, um, it was just, it died, it died, the little bird died, and, uh, the ladies were speculating that perhaps Mr. Wright killed the bird, uh, because he didn't like it, because it made noise, and that was one thing, you know, Mrs. Wright didn't have any kids, all she had in her possession was that little bird, and so, they um they say Mr. Wright wouldn't like no Wright wouldn't like the bird a thing that sang she used to sing he killed that too. Uh, Wright was close I think maybe that's why she kept to her, so much to herself. Um, her husband was not um was a hard man he was uh the, and this, this is all revealed through their conversation. We never meet Mr. Wright he's dead at the beginning of the play. Um, the only re revelation that we have about either of the characters, or Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright, is through the conversation of these two women, okay? He was a hard man just to pass the time of day with him. She actually shivers just like a raw wind that gets to the bone, okay? They're not painting him in a very light. He's a hard man. He's a cold man. The house is cold. Mrs. Wright doesn't have any kids. She's all by herself. And so they, they continue on to talk about her. I heard she used to wear pretty clothes and be lively when she was Minnie Foster, one of the town, town girls singing in the choir. But that, oh, that was 30 years ago. Um, so Mrs. Wright wasn't always the fluttery, quiet woman that she was there in the end. She used to be lively. She used to sing in the choir. She was Minnie Foster. 
okay? Uh, one of the town girls singing in the choir. So she used to be the, you know, the life of the party, happy, singing, dressing pretty, being lively. This was who she was prior to her marriage to Mr. Wright. Okay, so we can assume that her life undergoes this drastic change once she gets married and there at the end, you know, where she is now Mrs. Wright, she no longer has an identity to her own. She doesn't sing anymore. She doesn't dress pretty. She's not lively anymore. She's quiet. Um, uh, she's a completely different person. He says, they say about the their marriage, if there'd been years and years of nothing, then a bird to sing to you would be awful. Still, after the bird was still. Um, you know, they, years and years, all she had, you know, for, after being alone, she had that bird. And so, of course, she cherished that little bird. I have no idea why captures him. Sorry, that's in the middle of your... There. Um, so she has the bird. It's it. That's all she has. And once it's dead, like her life is essentially, she has no more happiness. She finds no more happiness in the life that she's living. No one comes to see her. The house is cold. Her husband is cold. Now we don't know if he was an abusive man. Um, it doesn't seem to insinuate that she'd been beaten or that she'd been verbally abused, but that's not the only kind of abuse. You know, verbal and physical abuse is not the only kind of abuse. There's mental abuse, too, where you have uh, someone is left alone, someone is denied uh, being around other people, um, someone is, is just denied company friendliness, love. There's all kinds of things that you could say um, there. So it's not, it doesn't necessarily mean that she was physically abused or verbally abused. We do know that he's a hard man. We do know that he killed her bird, but we don't know if he was physically abusive to her. Okay, so the, the men, meanwhile, they're still looking around the house, looking for evidence. And so they, um, to further kind of illustrate their views towards women, you know, they're having a conversation as they're looking um, and talking about Miss Wright. And they're like, well, women are used to worrying over trifles, which is where the play gets their, play gets its title from. Trifles meaning insignificant things. He's saying that women are silly and they only worry about little trifles like fabric and, and uh, flowers and things like that. Um, and, but they do realize that they have a place, um, but it is, as their, as their servants, uh, essentially. So he says, and yet for all their worries, what will we do without the ladies? Well, they wouldn't have anything to eat. They wouldn't have their clothes mended or ironed or, or things like that. So um, his attitude towards women is that they're useful, even though they're silly uh, and, and worry over trifles, that, they, um, that we couldn't live without them, meaning that they couldn't do anything um, for themselves. So. Through the eyes of Mrs. Peters and Mrs. Hale, we be, we see Miss Wright as a tragic figure, okay? She's stuck in this hard, lonely marriage. Uh, she's lost her once lively identity. She's gone from Minnie Foster, uh, who was lively and bright and loved to sing and was a girl about the town. And now she's become Mrs. Wright, who is a woman who is trapped in a cold home with a cold man. She has no friends. Although several times in their dialogue, Mrs. Hale wishes that she had come over more to see her, that she had visited, uh, that she wished that she had seen that she needed help. Uh, she knows how things can be for women because they all go through the same things, different kind of the same thing. Um, she wished that she had come more, but she did not. And so she's living this lifeless, confining, joyless marriage. Did she do it? Did she kill her husband? Absolutely. How do we know that? The knots in her sewing and the knots around his neck were the exact same kind of knot. But was it a justified killing? Well, if you look at it from the standpoint of the law, of course, not a justified killing. Um, however, for her, it was the only way that she could escape 
this life that she was living. So the women have discovered this evidence. Mean, while the men are upstairs hunting, their silly, trifling wives are downstairs. They're having a conversation. They've discovered by looking in her sewing basket that she is the killer, that they have evidence that she is the killer. They find the knots in her sewing, and they refuse to give the sheriff the evidence. They keep it a secret. So they're protecting her in a way, um, maybe as penance for never coming to see her, um, maybe because they feel sorry for her in the situation that she's in, uh, maybe because they want her to, you know, get set free and, and get a chance to live a, a different life. Um, so they refuse to, to give the sheriff that evidence. So really quickly, kind of just in a comparison, which I think is what I'm going to ask you to do on your essay, is is there another story that you can compare this to? Uh, and maybe not at the same level, but we did see a loveless marriage or a loss of identity in marriage early on in the semester when we read the story of an hour, where you have Miss Mallard, who believes that her husband is dead, and we see her undergo this transformation as she decides that she's free now to live the way that she wants to live. And so we see her go from this timid, meek, quiet woman to someone who is overjoyed and holding herself like a goddess because she now has no one to live for. She can live for herself. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that um, in the screencast uh, for the two, uh, comparing the two plays together. Um, but I want you to kind of keep that in the back of your mind, that what we're looking at is a similar situation here in trifles. This woman, she has lost everything. She has undergone a transformation. She lives in a cold home with no visitors. She is has, was married to a cold man. Uh, her only joy, her bird, has, has been killed by her husband because it sang too much. Um, and she's lonely, and she is she is beat down mentally um, by the existence that she's forced to live. So, yeah, she kills her husband. Uh, she suffocates him, which the men come to terms that they don't think that she could have done it. But she does it. She ties a rope around his neck and chokes the life out of him um, because she is ready to, she sees that as the only way that she can escape from this cold identity, this cold life that she is living. So we will talk more about comparing trifles and the story of an hour together um, for your essay and uh, I'll talk to you next time.